peace and blessings to my fans and will be fans today's topic how and why polygamy should be decriminalized with a cap protect opponents and not encourage if we truly admit sex is a need or a reasonable want then we should support systems that ascertain everyone get reasonable opportunity to fulfill that need or reasonable want Science increasingly confirms sex is a need with health benefits from physical health, mental health, and even emotional health. Like everything, there are exceptions. So just because you can seemingly see 10 or 1,000 of people who claim or do not seem to need sex does not nullify the general rule or right to be indifferent to the millions or billions who see it as a human need or reasonable want. In this age of questionable governments, the main religion or culture of a country may dangerously influence executive politicians and lawmakers, but to a lesser level, the judiciary. About versus four. As individuals, women tend to lie about sex, while men tend to lie for sex. I will justify those charges with examples towards the end. Gender figures of a country should determine the cap or limit. Sanity or conscience should protect the opponents through contracts. Education, not punishment, should show why not preferred, um, but it can be beneficial despite how it is abused by questionable folks. The gender ratio between men and women is in most countries shows women outnumber men, but hardly as many people assume. Worldwide, we are looking at around 5% higher, or at most 10%. So if your country has only about 5% more women than men, how can you justify one man can have up to four wives without being indifferent to the greater imbalance you create, you may create? Overreaction can cause a weak man to reap, but overreaction can also cause a weak state to create detrimental loss. Such a country will need to have a cap of just two wives, because just 15% of men who believe in polygamy can fill that gap. If a country has 50% more women, then you allow a cap of four with the understanding not all men desire polygamy by the way i will support the reverse where men outnumber women because men need sex and deserve it too however legalizing prostitution encouraging one night stands or other forms of transitory relationships may be wiser maybe a wiser option to satisfy such limited countries like china or you risk men killing men over women so you can decriminalize or legalize two to four, but criminalize those who go beyond the cap with fine, reasonable, sinful punishment, and or no more than three months of prison time uh, as symbolic. Protecting the opponents of polygamy is crucial, at least from a secular perspective. Using the same figures as example, if 20% of women opt for prenuptial agreement that bars the man from marrying another wife where you choose legalizing over decriminalizing you should protect such women by criminalizing their men who commit sins between creatures or breach of contract so a spin of effect of legalizing or decriminalizing polygamy is having a lot more prenuptial agreements beyond finance you are not just protecting these women to satisfy their desires or accommodate their fears, but with the honest consideration that some women are capable of killing a man who dangerously lie under a state that overprotect lies or, breaches, uh, or people who break contracts. How many Western men or women kill their partners in the West? To be able to marry a new love versus in Africa. Divorce can be recommended, but laws are contributing factors or are you claiming just race and whatever. These prenuptials protections will save lives, reduce murder charges, 
imprisonment costs and emotional costs to society. After protecting these 20 or XYZ percentage of women, you allow the men and women to live in peace, including those who choose polygamy. We have seen millions of heterosexuals who may even oppose LGBTQ lifestyle, but supported the end of criminalizing LGBTQ. But can we see millions of monogamous folks admit a polygamous neighbor is not dangerous and governments should not hunt them down? Why we should not encourage polygamy on a secular reasons? On secular reasons, it boils down to time, time and time. The human being have only 24 hours a day. Out of that you need learning time, walking time for both walls, phone time, <coughs> sorry, phone time beyond sex and chatting with partners. So the more people you get into your life, sorry I have to drink, the less time you have for each and that eventually affects the quality of time you may provide. The average person may argue for the time you give to each partner matters, but I am actually more concerned with the time you can give to each child, and most polygamous folks have children. Money-oriented folks may wrongly focus on how much money they give to their children, but children need both money and enough quality time, collectively and privately at times, one-to-one. -one. This also literally means if you claim the president, minister, director, or XYZ has enough money and should marry multiple wives, how will such a person have enough time to study, think, give bonus time, etc. to the public? My point is polygamy may be among the contributing factors why Africa is less financially developed. At the social level, when the husband dies fairly young, a big gap is often left. That have, then we have ripple effect throughout. Why polygamy should be tolerated but not encouraged on religious grounds? I will choose Islam as example on that part. Partly because Muslims practice polygamy more than any religion I know about and often on questionable arguments. When, how, and why polygamy came in the Quran, the recitation, must be studied by every Muslim and opponents of polygamy and Islam. Polygamy was cultural before it was religiously accepted. Islam gradually um, confronted some cultural practice and left some as choice. Um, recommends conscience on every choice through chapter 91. The chapter that resortly allowed polygamy is chapter 4, Surah Nisa. But the when, how, and why are paramount. When, when the devil is or idol worshipping come, temporarily defeated Allah's team in a war for reasons best known to God, um, the important resort choice of polygamy was born in Islam to primarily fix an immediate problem and leave room on how to fix possible future problems. Rough figure examples. A new religion of about 10,000 or XYZ people went to war and lost about 1,000 or XYZ men. Just a rough imagination. A caring leader or God now has to face about 1,000 dependent widows and how many thousands of orphans to be fed. So not only did the chapter and uh, after defeat sermon started with a heavy focus on ovens, but the very verse that allowed polygamy started with ovens. I read the chapter, the, the verse. It was chapter 4, verse 3. If you fear, you cannot act fairly towards the orphans. Then marry the woman you like, two or three or four. 
But if you fear, you will not be fair. Then one, oh, what you already have. That makes it more likely that you avoid bias. That's the end of quote. Um, for those who may not understand my accent, let me reread that. Chapter 4, 3. If you fear you cannot act fairly towards the orphans, then marry the woman you like. Two or three or four. But if you fear you will not be fair, then one or, or what you already have. That makes it more likely that you avoid bias. End of quote. I honestly think you do not need to be a genius to understand the probable uh, primary reason was to help orphans, then women, then survival of Islam, and last to give men responsibilities more than rights. Here are the widows and children of your brothers in faith who understood idol worshipping and burying of female infants are ungodly and terrible even from a secular perspective. Please do not abuse the wealth. Please do not abuse the wealth of any orphan, especially Muslim orphans. How about you marry some of the widows if you can help beyond sexual needs? Or some idol worshippers may take them and evil may continue. This is precisely the deduction the marijuana guy can see from the bars and events. Personally, I have no interest to practice polygamy today. But I will have seriously considered it in such a situation. Primary versus secondary and spin-off effects. Whereas some Muslims still marry beautiful widows, than religions and cultures that fear and frown over widows, we also have many Muslims who marry primarily for sex and argue on spin-off effects as helping women. I believe just as a conscientious Muslim will avoid multiple times of hajj to Mecca, but offer it to poorer Muslims, even more, I believe conscientious rich Muslim men should help poorer Muslim men and women to marry by offering quality employment and giving loans for business startups. The how aspect of polygamy has also shifted from early or even recent decades Muslims. For example, now many polygamous will choose different compounds uh, for their wives to avoid fighting wives more than fighting children, which fixes one problem but creates the problem of less time spending between parents and children and children of the same parents for more bonding. So there are advantages and disadvantages in the evolution or devolution of polygamy, depending on how you see it. God has how many things and still wants you to have dedicated time for him. Women and women activists argue for women. But how can a child say, I want more time with you, dad? Don't children need your time more than God and women? So please calculate how much you need or want to primarily dedicate to each daily, weekly or monthly. Questionable or weak arguments against polygamy. The claim that one man cannot sexually satisfy two to four women is questionable. Sexual energy is different and largely controlled by God. I truly believe God controls sexual abilities and outcome more than sexual desires. Although I have never practiced polygamy, yet to even marry one, I have been single all my life so far, I have enough sexual experiences to justify my claim that God has a role in our sexual powers. I have had weak sexual experiences. My normal sexual experiences can be great 30 minutes to a couple of hours of natural sex. And some extraordinary sexual experiences uh, that may be verified and that varied. For example, 
I had a girlfriend whom I regularly enjoyed with hours of sex. Um, but God demonstrated a miracle that seems closer to a blessing than a cause. At one point, God inspired me with words, some kind of a mantra to repeat, and some fairly normal plants to eat. And my sexual energy became too much to the very one who comfortably enjoyed me for hours and over a year. You know, after that, after that experience, we had sex three times in four days. And each one of them was not just too much for her to ask me to stop, but I didn't really spam within those four days. The point I am trying to make is the multiplication, the multiplication ratio of an erection can vary. The heat level of a male's penny can vary and is controlled by God than man. The semen, the semen and sperm releasing mechanisms can be controlled beyond humans. So I cannot deny God may punish people through sexual weaknesses, but I want you to also accept God can empower a man to satisfy even more than four women and daily. When you focus your opposition to polygamy on sexual satisfaction, the men who are highly blessed with sexual powers will laugh at you, and maybe rightly so. By the way, I do not share that mantra or food combination with anyone because I fear some may use it as weapon. Also, it was a partial cause because the girl ran away from me, um, but it coincided that we had to separate anyway because I was ready to come back to Africa. Another reason why I occasionally say this story is to remind folks with weak sexual life to feel free to search for natural products that may help, avoid man-made products by and large, and remember prayer because God certainly exists and his powers include sexual interventions. If he can do it with me in a transitory relationship, how much better can he do it for me or you in a marriage? So God does not control only sexual powers, but he can satisfy you with or without one female and give you many other blessings. Accordingly, my preference and advice is to pray for a happy, monogamous sex life and countless other blessings. Sex is nice, but God can turn walking, the sun, exercise, and anything to give you enormous joy. So I'd rather have that than questionable women who may love money, gossiping, and praises more than they love you. I have sex largely for health more than for joy. Despite truly enjoying it and looking for a partner in a world where women and sex are often overvalued, where polygamy may still help in our age. After having children and the woman starts or increase acting up, increases acting up, polygamy may be better than divorce, but both have some challenges. Countries like Eritrea may be better off with optional religious polygamy more than mandatory secular polygamy or exporting their women to China or XYZ. Russia should consider polygamy more than LGBTQ legalization or decriminalization. I also believe polygamy is better than adultery. But punishing less explicit adultery is not wise for humans and we can see that wisdom through the crown. Polygamy may also reduce the kind of date rape Bill Cosby and others are accused of. You can overfocus on the disadvantages or where it wouldn't help, but do not deny it has advantages and very weird to criminalize adults for such, especially where LGBTQ or adultery is legal. Prime Minister Stephen Harper of Canada was opposed to the legalization of LGBTQ because he argued, I'm paraphrasing, 
it will lead to the legalization of polygamy. He was assuming reasonable people will say how can a bisexual arrest or give criminal record uh, to polygamous adults or how can a Supreme Court judge say an LGBTQ police officer can arrest and appeal for a polygamous couple before some heterosexuals? That some individuals and in Muslim countries will muster the courage to protest, finance lawsuits, etc. for the weak ones among them. Until we give enough white women marijuana or marijuana inspired information to possibly have concerns, Nancy Pelosi, Hillary Clinton, Kamala Harris and their type of men and women are perfectly okay with jailing hundreds or thousands of Christians for polygamy and scaring millions with laws while arguing for Africa um, to stop under enforcing symbolic LGBTQ laws. Why women are partly to blame for today's polygamy? Women often lie about sex and God may punish them for such lies, even here or not, at least the guilty ones. Many women act like they are sexually doing favor to men, despite the clear evidence God is doing both favor uh, for both to be grateful. Karma demands a good or bad woman to enter certain relationships to reveal the truth. The same woman who insists women are sexually doing men favor will cry, why should I have like sex? or other women to get God's sexual favor through my husband or whatever. Only me should give him favor or get his favor. Mindset, mindset can bring karma. Words and deeds can also bring karma. Besides happily trying to satisfy him, you should educate, educate, educate and pray for him. As way of thanking God. Anything short on the list can haunt you on art or beyond. How many millions of women act like they are above sex and go buy sex toys while claiming men are crazy about sex? Then we also have how many millions as bisexuals now or lesbians? In Africa, women lie even about having wet dreams. Then you have another set of millions of women who believe in marabouts and other questionable means than God and good deeds to get or keep a man. Of course there are men who also lie about sex, but men are sexually weaker and may thus deserve sexual forgiveness than the powerful or more powerful. Besides lying, the sexual prowess of women also torn many of them to be arrogant and there is a price to pay for arrogance. So we must never over focus on sexual powers but understand the difference between power and choice and that an ever present God is watching over us. No culture, religion or government will be able to protect questionable men or women especially as marijuana legalization goes worldwide educate both genders about the dangers of sexual fears without being sexually reckless. Educate them on the dangers of sexual greed beyond money and endless sexual demands. Educate them on sexual arrogance beyond rape, masturbation and other ills. Rather than over focusing on your sexual powers, remember God. Remember learning, walking and having fun. Remember they are good men, regardless of how the media portrays us to appeal to your fear, greed or arrogance or in their so-called kindness that is void of truth or often mixed with lies and factional facts. Those who choose silence or indifference to evil by individuals, groups or governments are certainly guilty of more than an atom's weight. Condemn directly or echo those who condemn evil laws and evil faults in the spirit of chapter 103 and be guaranteed reward. 
I will be a witness for or against you. When God asks, who implicitly sided with the hypocrites, disbelievers, and polytheists that LGBTQ folks are better than reasonable polygamists, or that the alcoholics, gossipers, bleachers, and idol worshippers are better than marijuana users. May we learn and try a lot more. May God bless soul of Trinity. Let's learn, let's work, let's have fun. Thanks. It's Jerga Kebajigo, your activist and transformer from jergawall.com. Peace and blessings be upon you. May the Lord reward us immensely.